Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call this regular meeting of the Hinckley Township Board of Trustees to order on Tuesday, August 1 at 6.30 p.m. Call the roll, please. Here. 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 Also present are Fiscal Officer Cathwood and Fire Chief Grosenbaugh. I'd like to ask everybody to stand and please honor the flag with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll go to approval of the minutes. I will move to approve the minutes for the July 18, 2023 regular trustee meeting. Second. Seconded by Asheville. Discussion? I have some discussion just because there were some questions in the email that came with it. On page six, as it pertains to the executive session, the return time, um, the motion to return from executive session was at 7.26 p.m. Currently read 7.36 p.m. There was a question about a resolution number that I read versus what was in the resolution. Um, the resolution was offered, so I think that we should just utilize that. And then on page 10 under public, the first paragraph, second sentence, I'd like to offer some clarification there. <coughs> Augustine suggested contacting the fire association to offer them the opportunity as they have previously donated to the cause. This is what I would like for it to read and I can send you that language. That's, those are the only changes I have. What was amended? Yeah, I just, I've said many times in the past, I don't feel the need to reiterate verbatim what was said in meetings. Um, I think that it captures the um, Cliff's Notes version of a meeting, which is why we have them recorded on YouTube. So I don't think we need to change verbatim what was said. If the time was accurate, then I would approve the time that was changed. Well, the ORC codes you have to be corrected to the notes over the whatever. I don't have clarification on, so I can't. Well, the clarification was that it was as it read in the resolution. Yeah, so we don't change anything, right? Right. Yeah, not changing anything. Okay, very good. So, so what is second as amended? With the correct time. Well, okay, what are you guys doing? So are you amending it with two changes, one under the time and one under public? I think it just needs to be amended with a uh, time change when we return from executive session. So someone can move it however they like and then second it, and then I would recommend a roll call vote and then we go from there. Jack made the motion to well, move as amended, and I seconded it. And we're discussing that. What was the second? What was the last change you wanted, Melissa? Under public on page 10, first paragraph, second sentence, Miss Augustine suggested contacting the Fire Association to offer them the opportunity as they had previously donated to the cause. Is that not the same as what it says? Only you just adding detail to it at all? I'm offering the way that I perceived it to be. And what happened was I wanted to offer it to the Fire Association. And that's what we did. They were included in the first movie night, and I wanted to make sure that they were included in the second one, or at least had the opportunity to be included. And it doesn't say that? No. 
All right, let's be done with it. You provide that language to uh, Martha. We'll vote on this. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to approve the minutes for the July 26, 2023 special trustee meeting. Second. Second by Augustine discussion. No discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I am gonna, Chief has to bounce, I'm gonna let him. Thank you. Present. Uh, request appropriations for 8584 from Amazon for the fire officer principals. Uh, for Lieutenant Kolar for that fire officer, one class, we had one copy of the most recent edition. We did need to order a second one for him. Uh, Sean's bringing in his copy for um, Jared's Lieutenant Solomon. So moved. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next request appropriations act to skied $1,400 from fire safety services for four pairs of the black diamond X2 leather boots for uh, fire fire EMT, Andrew, Joey, Aiden, and Stefan, which are the four new hires. We did not have any boots that fit them down there. They're currently either in oversized or don't have any turnout gear boots right now. So moved. Thank you. Second discussion. These have a Nike swoop on them? No, they don't. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next request appropriations for $595 for Luke Ricketts from Genesis uh, Rescue for auto extrication training for the Hinkley Fire Department on September 16th of this year. We will be going to World Trucking where we will be working physically with World Trucking. They will actually be setting semis on cars and we will work with their tow truck operators. And Luke is a extrication specialist and he'll teach us how to do advanced techniques for, for our members. Uh, we're going to be putting a sign out sheet now. We're not even sure who's available, but we will have plenty of people attending it. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Augustine. Any discussion? Um, just to clear, you know, just to add to what Chief said, Luke is a employee of Genesis. Genesis. But he is providing this training on his own, so we will run him through our system as an independent contractor and he'll receive attendance. And I got the paperwork already for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Very good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Request to move firefighter EMT Sam Rose and Jim Geckel from the rate of 1478 per hour to the 1623 per hour effective immediately. So moved. Second. Second by Augustine. All in favor? Aye. 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 A uh, couple of, I have three quick items. Uh, I gave you the resignation of Aiden Samol effective immediately. Uh, next, um, Trustee Swedek back in March asked me to look into a grant for AEDs for, through, for RA for the baseball diamonds. Uh, we received a phone call that we will be having a check sent to us from the Fire Fire Benefit Committee, which is out in New York State that provides uh, to fire departments for baseball diamonds, sporting events, stuff like that. It was uh, gonna be $3,840 is the check, which will cover, I believe, two AEDs. So I reached out to Raj, you guys saw, and um, we gotta we got figure out how they're gonna store them and make them accessible and all that. Thanks for the efforts on that. Not yeah, a problem. Thank you for taking the I, I was surprised that I had this thick New York accent woman call me. I'm like, I don't know who you are. Let me look, <laughs> look this up. <laughs> um, and the last was um, on Friday, uh, our member Daisy Stigelmeyer received a um, nomination. I nominated her for scholarship through the Carolina Fire Days, which is in Ashbury or Asheville, North Carolina. And they picked my recommendation. They picked one other person and she's getting a full scholarship for the week-long conference down there, airfare, uh, hotel, and the class with instructors from all over the United States. So they did a Zoom meeting. We, we surprised her with it. Um, it. The scholarships from a fallen firefighter that uh, passed away earlier in the year from, uh, in North Carolina. So they, they're paying for two students to travel and spend the week down there. And that was two in the United States. Two in the that, United States, that yeah. she, she yeah. got, so. Yeah. Congratulations yep. to her. I talked to her on Friday and she was yeah, she over was. the moon. I, I walked in and said, we need to talk, come into the, <laughs> come into the, uh, come into the uh, uh, training room. And there's a TV set up with all these people on it. She's like, what's going on? And 
So, but it she's was such a hard worker. She she's just as I, as I told you, the same thing I told her. She's inspiring for yeah, women that want to get into. She's full time in Richfield. She got hired there last year, and they absolutely love her there. Um, I'm very good friends with her lieutenant, and he praises her all the I time. I told him they're not allowed to steal her. No, I, I told to him that too. I told him that too. <laughs> He works with Bowman, or she works with Bowman. Yeah, how what, what more entertainment yeah. can you have within that? <laughs> yep, yep. That's all I have. Um, okay. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Um, the the two motion so moved Thank on um, oh, the resignation. Yeah. Second. Yep. Sorry. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Um, and then we don't have to accept any. No, we don't. We don't have to check yet. It's still in the mail. Okay. Um, um, I, but we have to accept the AEDs. Yes or not yet? Well, not until we get that check in the mail and all okay. that. Yeah. So it was an FYI. Yeah, it was just an FYI to community. share. Yep. Um, I did the one last thing is touch truck is October 1st, one to three, one to four. Uh, flyers will one be to coming. Four. One to four. Yeah. <laughs> Chief did. Uh, Ben Cutler talked with you about possible training out there. Yes, we we went out there yesterday. Okay. Um, it is very overgrown, so he's going to let us know when they actually get in there and clear it. Okay. But looking at the house, I don't know. It's in bad shape, so we may not be able to do anything, but thank you. Right, fair enough. Chief, do, do you have the hours for the touch of traffic? One to four. Good. Yeah. Anything else for Chief? Thank you. Um, do you have like five seconds? Sure. Our Cub Master is here to discuss the flag ceremony. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And we may need you to be a part of that conversation okay. if you don't mind. Sure. Jeff, yeah. do you Cub Master. Jeff, oh, there. I don't know if that is that mic working. Okay. Yes, it is lit. It is it is lit. No, that's just for people who are watching. Oh, okay. So and and recording. Okay. Thank you for being here, Jeff. No, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to come. Um, and I did want to uh, talk specifically about the upcoming flag retirement ceremony. We'll work on timing. We've still got plenty of time to figure that out because we had scheduled it for October 1st. We'll figure, we'll figure it out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. We'll figure it out. Um, as, uh, as part of um, the scouts tradition here in Hinckley, um, and in coordination and supporting the police department, um, we we collect, you know, flags that need to be retired, you know, and and that's a long-standing tradition way before I got here, and has been going on for a long time. Um, as PAC, or excuse me, Troop 520 disbanded several years ago, there was a gap in that coverage, um, and uh, we've kind of picked up. I have we haven't done anything since I took over two years ago but we're going to do that. We have a significant backlog and want to get that on the books. Um, I've been stopping every few months and picking up the ones here from the police department. There's also a collection box in uh, the lobby of, uh, of Our Lady of Grace as well. Um, and at the moment, uh, we have 680 flags that need to be taken care of. Um, that is a combination of things of all different sizes, folks bringing some into the into the police station, but uh, uh, <clears throat> at least half are the flags that are on the veteran graves that we take off every year and put the new one on. So a, a large contingent of them are, you know, this size or so. Um, so I did want to talk about that. We uh, I had put on the schedule for October 1st, I have Bronger's Park reserved, and we're going to do that in some form. Um, We'll, we'll work on timing or if it needs to be another day, you know, we can be flexible, we'll figure it out. But that is something that is a priority of mine to have done, hasn't been done in a few years. Um, but specifically, I wanted to, um, I, I, I sent a uh, email to uh, Trustee Augustine um, regarding a wrinkle that has come up in my planning and research on how to properly do this. I've done many of these when I was a younger scout. Never have I been in charge of doing one and all the adult details that you might need to know. Um, in the last 10, 15 or so years, the vast majority of which, including the one that's here in the room with us, uh, flags have been moved to, uh, they're all nylon now. They're not a fabric or cotton flag anymore. Um, that presents a pretty uh, big conflict with a lot of 
safe ways to retire a flag. And, and for those in the room that don't know and those listening online, the proper way is to, there's a ceremony to it. You destroy the flag, essentially rendering it not a flag anymore by uh, cutting it apart. There are several ways to do that, but the method is kind of irrelevant. Um, you cut it apart, it's no longer a flag. The flag can then be burned in its pieces. Then once cool and out, the ashes are buried. Um, the problem with that is you really shouldn't be doing that to a nylon flag. It's not good for the environment. It's not safe to be around in the first place. Plus, what do you do with 680 of them? So um, as I was thinking about it and trying to plan a proper way to do this and to create a sustainable path to be able to continue to do it over the, hopefully we set a new tradition, um, the recognized method by the Pentagon the American Legion and stuff like that is burying them. So once you have cut them apart, you then just bury them. Traditionally in a, in a respectful box or something like that, you know, but uh, then the next question is, well, where? So I, I sent an email to uh, Trustee Augustine about, you know, is there a way maybe we could find a spot in one of the cemeteries for this? Do you or have any that could be burned? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in the current crop that's there, I'll bet half can. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's, it's not a, you know, a gigantic problem. What's our, you know, kind of neatly kind of put together. I don't know if it's a gigantic hole either. Because we're talking about two different events on the same day, October 1st, with the touch of truck and the flag ceremony, would we be able to have an, a fire personnel person available for that? What time? I, I had it planned for 4 p.m. 4 p.m.? Yeah, we, I mean, the duty crew would be available. What are you just needing for safety precautions? Well, my, my vision for the, for the event in, in its entirety would be for it to be a community thing. Sure. Okay. Right. Um, so my hope is to, in combination with several other scout troops in the area, um, have the fire department's presence, having the police department's presence, having several other troops, um, all of our, Former 520 members made it to 511, which is out of United Methodist in uh, in Granger, uh, and we have some members that went to True 407, which is out of the FOP Hall on 130th, um, and trying to kind of herd all those cats together. That's kind of the way that I saw it, and you know it could be as simple as we just have it, and we we need some assistance to make sure that things don't get out of I hand. Make myself available for you for that day, but also if there was. Uh, desire to, there's absolutely no reason that we couldn't have a, a, a foursome from each group doing the ceremony together, right? So. Yeah, I will make myself available for that. Okay, that I appreciate is, that. It, it means something to me, and I do have a flag on my desk to, to, to remove to, or for, to dispose of too, but okay. I, I, and the more the merrier. Out, I, 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 I believe in the military. I mean, it yeah. Several members that were current or former military. So I, I believe in it. So I will yeah. make myself available. And, and we can adjust accordingly. You know, if it needs to be if five. It's done at four, it, if it's done at four, I, we're, we're in the cleanup process. So I can scoot away at four and come down there. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. He doesn't mind leaving the cleaning process. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> neither do I. So his wife might have something. If you, if you, have, a secret, have, if you have a secret for how to get out of that, let me know and I'll just follow your procedure. No, but I will make myself available. Okay, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yep. Um, so the other request is a potentially a, a burial site for these flags. Yeah. Sustainably. That, yeah, exactly. And, you know, the form of that I don't have in my head. It's just that's a potential route. But where is the most appropriate place for that? Is it, you know, and and to what level? I'm, I'm coming to you with half a thing. I'm not trying to have a full solution. I don't even know if it's possible, what How I'm talking do you about. you generally? There's really no, that's the problem is that we're in the wild west on this one. There's no regulations set out. There's no, and there's differing opinion. Um, so I don't have an answer for that. If you can maybe see what some other folks are doing, if they have some kind of type of container that can be added to. Yeah. Underground container. Right. I'd rather see it in Veterans Park. I think that would be it. Oh, that's a fan. That, and that's, that. and that's a, that's a, Great line. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, any, you know, any location, I'm, I'm open to really anything. Um, I have reached out and tried to grab a few pieces from from everybody, and there, there's really not much of a consensus. And to that end, I'm not entirely sure that it has to be buried per se. If we went that route, could we have an above ground but respectful, 
you know, thing that we could, we could fill up, but longevity of, of that. That's why I'm coming. I, I, I really don't. Are you looking at because it's plastic re recycling? Of yeah. Water? So there was a big push for that and was trendy uh, six or eight years ago, but recycling is essentially collapsed in this country. Um, I actually were kind of affiliated in that industry and uh, all recycling of flags is gone. There is a couple of places that still accept them and they charge like $40 a flag to recycle them. So it's, it's unfortunately not a sustainable option for us. Um, that's, that's kind of the, as, as far as I know, so far, that's as much as I've been able to gather. There is no 100% right way. There are some, I had some people tell me, eh, just burn them, whatever. Well, that doesn't match with scouting's values and taking care of the environment. It doesn't match with the, the safety thing alone of having eight-year-olds around 600 nylon flags burning. In a thing. It's just not, that's not the appropriate way to do it. And having the chief around. Well, <laughs> there you go. There you go. But um, I would support something at Veterans Memorial Park like, to okay. figure out what that looks like. Sure, sure. But at least we have a location now. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a wonderful idea. Had not come to my mind because I didn't know where we wanted to start digging a hole. But um, that's that's basically the the everything I had this evening, and kind of wanted to put it out there in the in the world. And um, we are looking forward to having a good year. I guess if I can plug for a second, uh, we're really going to have a good year. We're going to start our major fall recruiting as school starts back up. Um, we almost tripled in size last year and i think we're going to do it again about well, maybe not triple maybe i'm being a little facetious but i think we're we've got a good thing going here in hinkley we've had an unbelievable support from the community so thank you and uh we'll just try to keep being of service where we can thanks for stopping up okay nice to see the scouts kind of yeah garage sale september 9th yeah yeah garage sale that's 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 the other half of the reason i have no hair we're getting there. <laughs> the flea market is going to be going to be back this year. Um, after several years of being missing in action, the flea market will be back. It will be in the old fire base. Um, and all of uh, all the information for that signups and stuff like that can be found at HinkleyCubScouts.com. And uh, we're working on getting the map set up and we've got a fair amount of registration. We are ahead of last year, the number of registrations that we have at this time. So I think that that's a, a positive sign. Well, and it's nice to see your numbers are rebounding also. Yeah, yeah, it's been good. As with many social organizations, we took a hit during COVID, sure. right? And there was that, a lot of hunger for that to come back out. And I think people are starting <laughs> to see that we're alive and kicking again. And it's a good thing. Um, we we have almost 40, 40 scouts at this point. And as a brag on my scouts, not on our leadership, um, last year, we were the only pack in the district that had 100% of their scouts advance Great. at the end of the year. So we've got a really special group of kids, a really special group of families that are a part of it. So it's really awesome. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything you do. If you want to shoot me an email, I'll just to finalize everything. Yeah, we'll do for Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Jeff. Have Thank you guys very much. Have a good night, guys. Have a good night. Good, good evening. Soon. Jackson, you want to come up and do this? Same thing? Yes. I think Jack's really this, excited about this. <laughs> this fine young man, not only did he just turn 18, he's been taking care of us as far as practicing the meetings. Come up over here. Oh. Happy birthday, and, uh, Jack. Thank you. He's done the work to become a notary public. So Is there we're anybody gonna, that we're gonna swear him in could get a picture of this? Thank you. Right? We're good. All right. Oath of Office for Ohio Notary Republic. Please raise your hand and repeat after me. I, Jackson Ragone. I, Jackson Ragone. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I shall faithfully and honestly discharge the duties. That I shall faithfully and honorably discharge the duties. Of the Office of Notary Republic. Of the Office of Notary Republic. That I shall support, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. I shall support, defend, and protect the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. That I shall discharge the duties. That I shall discharge the duties. Of my office of notary public. Of my office of notary public. For the State of Ohio. For the State of Ohio. With fidelity. With fidelity. So help me God. So help me God. Or this affirmation I make and give under penalty of perjury. Or this affirmation I make under the penalty of perjury. 
Congratulations, young man. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Great Thank job. You. Keep up the good work. Patrick, sign this one. <laughs> <laughs> He's even telling us what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What a guy. That's how it started, Jackson, with your virtual interview. You were telling us how to do it. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's why you made two. <laughs> Always got to have a backup, right? Right. Martha. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Fund status is currently at $7,740,277.50. Yeah. Of which one million one hundred nine thousand seventy-six dollars and sixty-two cents are in pulled investments, six million six hundred and thirty-one thousand two hundred dollars and sixty-six cents are in primary checking. Um, just a couple of, of quick items. One, the uh, the auditor who performed the agreed upon, uh, agreed upon procedure audit last week. She was here Tuesday through Thursday. She's uh, finished up and it's in the review process right now. So I, I think for all practical purposes, uh, it's completed. It should cost the township quite a bit less than a, a full audit that we've had in the uh, past. And I'll let you guys know as soon as everything's wrapped up. So. Don't be shy. She told me you got a gold star. Yeah, that they... Uh, <laughs> The audit's never over. Um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't go to my head. Let me tell you. Um, also, the open enrollment period for the um, township full-time employee health care. I am going to begin on August 7th, close off at uh, August 30th. That's because um, we can wrap it up a lot quicker knowing that we have the two-year renewal and it's already been approved. So I'll send that out to everybody uh, probably toward the end of the week. Everybody will have their approximate costs and then just report back to me. Mm -hmm. And that's it for me. If anybody has questions, let me know. I'm going to go into the office and do some more. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. I will move to pay the bills in the amount of $153,893.59. Second. Seconded by Ashroll. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, service. We are, I'm going to make the motion right now for service for uh, the letter of intent for OPWC. Dr. Lewis and Land One. Oh, is that for the application? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I, I, I'm just going to move that we submit a letter of intent to uh, the county engineer's office to be considered for 2024 OPWC funding, uh, with the understanding that we are looking for grant monies. If we are uh, all in agreement with that. I'll look for a second on that. Second. Second by Ashwell. Any discussion? Yep. Good Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll circulate that for signature in a second. Anything for zoning? Uh, one thing for zoning, I wanted to offer some clarification. There was a question at the last meeting about the concept plan for Country Brook, which took place on July 19th um, down at the Nevada County Planning Commission. That was not an open public meeting. So um, it was specifically for people who were a part of either the county or the township agency. So I just wanted to offer clarification on that. That's all I have for zoning. All right. Very good. Cemetery? I have one cemetery deed. I need two witnesses from the audience to come up and witness the trustee signing the deed. Okay. 
I'll sign first and then we'll have you sign after. Thank you. Jeff, do you just look at our agenda so you know when there's going to be a cemetery? It's, you're just, you're always here. I love it. He's like, where's my pen? I got to go. <laughs> Oh, and we're back. Okay. Press the one. Yes, sir. Thank you, you gentlemen. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, just, I see, uh, Melissa, you have about uh, Greensmith there. I just from the entire board, I'd like to say that was a, a very magnanimous decision on their part to donate those trees and take care of the installation. I, I agree wholeheartedly with you on that. Thank you. I just wanted to express the board's gratitude again um, publicly. We had mentioned it in the work session, but sometimes that was overlooked. Um, I did have further conversation based on the work session with um, the Hinkley Garden Club and based on the location that we're looking at and the list of native, native species that, to the area, um, they are recommending the red bud trees um, if we were, wanted to look at a native species. The Eastern red bud. I don't remember if it was an That was the first one that John had recommended yeah, was the Eastern red bud. And they're beautiful. They've got like a purple flower. They don't get very big. And I like how they're kind of spirally. I think they kind of branch out more instead of tall. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I would be fully on board with that since that was the number one recommendation. And from what I understand is that will do well in either location that we put it in. If there's kind of the plan, I'm you're going to be working with the garden club, correct? Mm -hmm. To kind of create Correct. ideas of what it'll be okay yeah i think they, these specifically we wanted to put on that bordering um, property line so that it just offers almost like a protective screen uh, and just have the ability to, to utilize that space for future people that want to be honored fantastic have you spoken to the greensmith about changing i have not i wanted to get the consensus from the board okay i agree I'd like to contact my local arborist. <laughs> well, he what just do you happens think? to be here. Red buds are fine. That's good. Okay. <laughs> now I'm good. I own a couple thousand of them. Do you have any that you want to donate? I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you want to take a lot of Athens, Ohio. <laughs> from That's a, main... a pretty drive. I've driven that for four years. <laughs> from a maintenance perspective, all good? Yes. Very good. Yeah, good choice. Perfect. Sign Wonderful. me up. Awesome. And then the last thing that I have on my agenda was that I had contacted the um, Medina or the Highland School Superintendent, Kathy Ackerman. We in the past as trustees have held a meeting every October for the third grade classes at Hinkley Elementary School. It correlated with their curriculum. It was a part of them learning about our, their local government. Um, with COVID, it kind of went to the wayside. And the last one that we did was a virtual meeting. And so I asked her if that was something that we could um, bring back for the students at Hankley Elementary. And she assured me that that is something we could probably do this October. So I just want to let the trustees know. At the advance. school? Yes. And I will be in touch with the teachers and the principal so that we can align it with the curriculum. And that's all I have. Trustee Ashrell. Okay, I gave you both a copy of the rough draft version that we had discussed um, regarding the Kimball trash survey. Um, you have it in your packet, but I added it late, so it's probably the very last piece of paper in your packet. Um, the number one question that we have is, have you ever opted out? Any Thoughts, objections on that one? We tried to keep it, I know we wanted to keep it to five, correct? We have six here. I cut down on a couple. So anything that you guys are not good with, don't be afraid to strike it and we can get ourselves down to five unless we feel that six is appropriate. So are we good with that one? 
or you want to read them all first and then no. I will read them all for all of you. So you guys Honestly, know. Honestly, that was my question and I don't think it's necessary reading the other questions. Okay. So that one we would strike. Because I think if we're asking them if they've opted out, they may have changed their mind. They may have decided that year three when they couldn't opt out, that they like it. Unless you think it's a viable option to maintain. Let's do, let's read through them all and see if we want to, maybe we want to strike two and add in a new one. So just so everybody knows what we're looking at here is the number one was, have you ever opted out? The number two question is um, not a multiple choice, but uh, kind of check the box. And that is, do you support moving ahead with the single hauler with a cap amount not to exceed a certain dollar amount per quarter. And I have $100. So yes, I want to remain with um, knowing that it will not exceed $100 or not exceed $115 or not exceed $130. So that way it lets everybody, it lets us know where everybody's comfort range is in terms of pricing because we have to put this out to bid. So we could end up getting all the bids back saying it's going to be $136 a quarter. And then we could say, well, we're not going to accept any of the bids. Um, number three, would you like to see a three-year or five-year contract? Number four. Are we commenting on these now? Sure. What happened? I, th I would change that. Would you prefer a three- or five-year contract? But I also think there should be something in with the understanding that a shorter contract would probably be at a higher cost. So kind of a disclaimer. Yeah. Okay. Is that what we talked about at the work session? I agree with that. We did, that's a good point. And I didn't catch that. I did get a couple out of here that I'm like, no, we talked about that, but I will make a note of that um, and send these back to you in the next couple of days. Um, Number four, range of price not to exceed. Oh, wait, that's the same thing. Check the box per quarter. Uh, she I, added that I would one actually in. Have, I would have number two be the one you support moving ahead and then put that cap amount into the bottom one. Oh, so you're saying just make number two the question of do you support moving ahead with a single hauler? Yeah. And then for... The number four question, putting those cap, cap amounts, amounts in yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, look what number five says. And then we can just delete number five. Mm -hmm. Number two is already stating that. So we'll remove number five. And are you utilizing the recycling feature? Um, I took out because I thought there were too many questions. So I took out the question of um, what are your needs for trash service? You know, um, are, do you find yourself um, using the large items, you know, removing a mattress, removing a couch? I took that out because I didn't want to have too many questions. And now we're down to one, two, three, four right now. Yes. I like that. Now, will you have a designated box for responses like you do in this one? I can. Or you can do like yes, no with a check mark. Yes. Option or a circle. Option. Oh, you mean for every single question? Yes. Yeah. Just yes. Because sometimes it's easier. Yep. Writing is not the easiest. Yep. This was the rough, rough, rough draft. So I just wanted to see where we were at in terms <laughs> of questions. And I will fix this with these notes that we just made and I will enter that in. So it kind of um, is a little bit more visually stimulating and I can send that to you both. If we keep, have you ever opted out? I would move it to the, to the last question. I don't think you ever need that because if you support moving ahead, right. If you don't support moving ahead, you're, okay, you're one so of the people. Okay, so we've eliminated one and five. I'd say, I kind of remember this is where we were going to try and get our um, idea of the percent that we're going to need for, opt for opting out. So 
I don't necessarily want to, I mean, I'm fine rewording that instead of have you ever opted out is- Well, maybe you put that after question two where it says, do you support, support moving ahead? And they say yes. And question two is, if you do not support moving ahead, have you ever opted out? There's a lot of people that support the single hauler that opt out. You know, like- Yeah, but that still becomes part of the percentage that you need to consider. I feel like you have something you want to add. No. I feel like he does too. <laughs> I like I heard a deep sigh. <laughs> We're gonna keep staring at you until you speak. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Let's just leave it as is then. Have you ever opted out? And let's pop it up at the bottom. Because it's a quick yes or no answer. And once you, I get to the bottom of the survey, I want it to be a quick yes or no answer. Well, have you maybe have you ever applied? Because that could be taken two different ways. Well, yeah, I've tried to opt out but, and I've uh, gotten okay. denied. That's so fine. and then maybe, you know, you put the same thing on there. You put a disclaimer saying this question is trying to determine the percentage of opt-out necessary to move forward, something to that effect. Like a little asterisk there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, then I just added in the bottom there. Um, this was Lynn's suggestion, which I think is a good suggestion, maybe to add in at the top of this survey. As Hinckley Township approaches the end of our five-year contract with Kimball Companies Incorporated for single trash and recycling services, we are sending out this survey in attempt to better gauge what our residents in Hinckley Township would like to see in the future regarding trash and recycling for our township. I think that's perfect. And I would put it right at the top. Yeah, open with that too. Okay. Perfect. That was easy. I will make the changes to that. And even by the time our next meeting, hopefully we'll be able to say, yep, we're good with that. And we still have a month before we need to send that out. Is everybody comfortable with that timeline? Perfect. Okay. All right. The shredding event. Um, first of all, after our last meeting, um, last week, the work session, I wanted to check with Matt from Black Ops Destruction to ensure that he is still comfortable donating his services to the township after the insinuations were made by Trustee Augustine at the last meeting. I was offended for him that he is donating his time and service to the township to help our residents. And you said you were worried about the optics of him profiting from this event. Correct. The profit that you implied he will make from recycling paper will not even be enough to cover his gas that he uses during the four hour shred event. He wished to remain nameless because he does not need the recognition. However, you mentioned him as my brother twice. By doing that, you were just able to further solidify how deeply rooted my family is in selfless community service. So I would like to say thank you to Matt Marzullo and Black Ops Destruction on behalf of the township for their generous donation. He is still comfortable moving forward. All right. The Hinckley Township Shred Day will be Saturday, September 30th from nine until one. Everybody is confirmed for that. Summit E-Recycle will shred. This is a list of everything that's, um, that they're gonna recycle desktops and laptops, tablets, cell phones, computer monitors, keyboards, mouse, power supplies, printers, cables, cords, batteries of any type, ink and toner, household appliances, VCRs and DVD players, stereos, gaming systems, and now they do have two items that they will charge a small fee for. Um, if you're bringing in a 12-inch screen tube TV, it will be 
to shred that. Anything over 12 inch for a tube TV will be $20. Black Ops Destruction will destroy any paper documents, um, paper clips, um, rubber bands, um, three ring binders are not okay for them. And um, for that one, they can take up to the limit will be three bankers boxes per car. Now, I did speak with them also regarding um, what you had mentioned, Melissa, with um, checking IDs. They have said they will not have the capacity to do that. They cannot check um, to make sure that everybody is a resident. So if that's just how we want to promote it as a Hinkley Township event, um, we can certainly hire, you know, a four-hour detail for the police department for somebody to check um, it was just a suggestion IDs. since it's the first year we didn't want traffic on 303. Um, what that was, or I'm sorry, on Bridge Road, that was one of the things I had mentioned when I ran a shred event for Hinkley Elementary School back way back in the day, as you had said. Um, we had traffic culminating right onto 303 and it would have caused an issue. So I was just thinking ahead that maybe if we just made it for Hinkley residents, since it's a Hinkley Township event and they had to show some type of know, mail or something to show that they're citizens here or residents here, then, you know, that might assist us as it's the first year. Okay, so we're fine with them not having to provide anything because nobody's going to be able to check it unless we want to have a police detail or, okay. Okay, so. Um, so it's open to all public. Well, we can promote it as a Hinkley Township event. Um, and if somebody sneaks in from Granger or Sharon, good for them. When is it? It's going to be Saturday, September 30th from 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. at the Hinkley Elementary School parking lot. It's a rain or shine event. Work with monitors? Yes. Yes. Um, I'll put it on social so people see um, with their website so people can kind of visit that website and get to know a little bit more information. And I will include this list of everything that is accepted by the two different companies. So very generous of both of them to offer this. I would agree. As I said, I mean, it doesn't cost us money is a good thing. Right. I've never shredded anything before, so. That's all I have. Very good. Okay. So for the um, fire and police dispatching, uh, the sheriff's office had contacted Chief Sentner advising a possibility of saving uh, some money with that contract. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a lot, but it also puts us in a position where we will know for the next couple of years what the rate increase will be as opposed to being tied to the CPI. After discussing it with the chief, his recommendation was we move forward with that. So with that being said, I would like to move to adopt a resolution authorizing the 2023 contract with the Medina County Sheriff's Office for Fire and Police Dispatching Services effective August 1, 2023. This contract supersedes previous contract agreements. The 2023 payment to the Medina County Sheriff's Office for services is in the amount of $64,649.40. This amount is broken down with a police contribution of $38,789.64, 60%, fire contribution of $25,859.76 of 40%. Second. Seconded by Asheville. Discussion? And it goes into what year, 2020? December 31st, 2024, or is that the current one? That's the current one. 
And that should put us through and on the same uh, page with everybody else then. Add to the motion that, that well, this was. I'm sorry. This, this is provided by Martha. So. Agreement shall be in effect until December 31st, 2024. So a year. Okay. Yeah, I have um, no objection. I spoke with uh, Chief Sentner about it. I also spoke with Chief Grossenbaugh about it, and they had no concerns. This contract is. Uh, mm -hmm one of the first in Medina County and we, our, our department heads have done a fantastic job. So I fully support it. No further discussion. I will call the roll. Augustine? Yes. Asheville? Yes. Swedek, yes. Okay, uh, next is um, the Columbia Gas Project. The prosecutor's office has completed an agreement for us to ensure that the project is conducted accordingly and that we are protected uh, for any construction that was done there. Uh, with that, I'll move to enter into a construction agreement with Columbia Gas of Ohio Incorporated and the Medina County Board of Commissioners as prepared to the, by the Medina County Prosecutor's Office to allow for the installation in pavement certain Columbia natural gas facilities necessary to continue the provision of reliable natural gas service to certain customers in Hinckley Township. Second. Seconded by actual discussion. You don't want to read the whole thing, Jeff? I think we'll enter it into the record. Works for me. I will call the roll. Augustine? Yes. Ashrell? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Okay, last is. Uh, updated agreement for Lewis Land Professionals to do the uh, engineering work for the remaining work up on uh, Bethany Lane. Uh, they, I, they adjusted it at my request after speaking with Martha to put a cap in the, uh, in to the agreement for of $10,000. So you're with me. Okay, I move to adopt a resolution to hire Lewis Land Professionals Incorporated to perform engineering services for a road improvement project on Bethany Lane in an amount not to exceed $10,000. Second. Seconded by Augustine. Discussion? Sure. We'll call the roll. Augustine? Yes. Asheville? Yes. Spidek? Yes. And I have one last thing to say that I want to read into the record. Um, it was brought to my attention that a petition is being circulated for signature in the town supporting, uh, requesting support to urge the trustees to consider the creation of a TIF district. There are several issues of the petition that are cause for concern. The petition is titled the Hinckley Community Coalition and lists a number of businesses at Hinckley as members. I've been informed that at least one of those listed, Hinckley Elementary School, was not aware that they were listed. The school president and the school board superintendent were both unaware of this petition. I'm not sure if there are any others listed who are not made aware of their inclusion. Also, the example of a TIF district as cited on the back of the petition is inaccurate and misleading. The fact that the tax dollars are ultimately being paid to the developers to recover their costs is entirely omitted. The creation of a TIF district is very complex and to try and simplify it to the graphic provided with the lack of information is a disservice to the residents who are being petitioned. In addition, the petition infers that the Board of Trustees has not investigated bringing water to town center. The township has looked at the water issue on multiple occasions, both the current board and prior boards. The fact of the matter is that it is an expensive proposition and with our current conditions and resources, the county will only consider the project as an assessed project. Those who would benefit would be assessed via their property tax. When those property owners were queried about participating, the affirmative results were insufficient for the county to consider moving forward. The TIF district was discussed at length as well and laid to rest as the board declined to move forward with taxing the community con to construct a water line with such a limited group of beneficiaries. If they do intend to bring that petition to us, 
the information on it has to be accurate so that people know what they're signing. That's my contention and that's all I have to say on that matter. Is there anything else for the good of the order? Anybody from the public wish to comment? Now is when you can get up. <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> Hi, my name is Cindy Meadows, and my address is 3896 Boston Road in Brunswick Hill Township. Um, even though I'm not a resident of Hinkley, um, I just wanted to share with you um, and your residents the impact that the proposed interchange would have. Um, sorry, all of a sudden I'm a nervous wreck. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I'm sure you're well aware of that. Um, I don't know if many of the residents are. It's been all over the news, but I don't know that um, they understand the impact it'll bring to Brunswick, Brunswick Hills, North Royalton, and here in Hinkley. Um, <clears throat> so I come here tonight asking you to oppose it. Um, actually, I'm kind of begging. <laughs> Did I speak with you on the phone? Um, no, no, I don't because think somebody so. else called me. We did pass a resolution. Did you? Okay, thank you. I yeah. I wasn't sure, and I didn't know that you know if it was hearsay, so I didn't want to assume. No, back before it, it, it went, went before the state, and oh, the, the okay. issue that I explained is we have no control over it. It is a state project. And I urge anyone who's opposed to it to contact the state reps. You know, exactly. Make your voice heard down there. Yes. Send them emails, call them. Correct. They're more than willing to listen to you. But our reps aren't the only ones that are involved, obviously. Mm -hmm. it's, it's voted on as a board. Correct. So, but you have to make your voice heard. Exactly. And that's why I'm here. And also to kind of spread the word to the residents who don't know about it or don't understand the details of it, how it came about, you know, what like I said, the impact can be on the communities around it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm here to kind of spread that as far as contacting the government, Columbus, you know, everybody. Um, and I wanted to kind of touch on a couple of things. Um, you know, I'm not just here for myself. I'm here for everybody in the communities around the interchange. Um, I don't know if the residents know that, you know, value, home values will um, drop considerably and um, the rate of crime that will come into the area from it. Um, 70, well, Ohio ranks fourth in human trafficking. Um, I think that's important to know as well because if this interchange goes in, it, it's very easy access for that. Um, as well as other crimes. But I think to me, that's very important for our kids, our grandkids. Um, and sorry, I lost my place. Okay, so basically that I kind of covered everything I wanted to cover. Um, and thank you for your support. With that, I we appreciate it. Everybody who's involved appreciates that. Thank you. Good luck with that, and thank, thank you. you for coming and getting involved. That's well. Thank you for well, giving I, me a minute. One of the biggest obstacles is, I believe, it's very heavily supported by Cobb County, who has a big voice down in the state. Okay, and, and you know, to overcome that, there needs to be a groundswell of support in the yeah opposition. So. Yes. The more folks that you get calling down there and, and bothering those folks. The yes. Yes. We have many people who are sending emails to senators, state reps, um, NOACA people, ODOT people to try to get, you know, as, as much information out there for everybody. I take it there's somebody here that's <laughs> part of that. No. Oh, okay. Um, so <laughs> what's that? The opposite. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right. So anyway, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming out. Yes, thank you. Good luck.
It's like it was an introduction. You want to follow up on that, John? <laughs> it's, it was almost like an introduction. Uh, John Kalis Ridge Road. So I am also in the business of bringing awareness today. Uh, if I could just read this real quick to you. Okay, so again, interestingly enough, she brought up Nawaka, and that's what I'm here to talk about today as well. So a little backstory here. Uh, Nawaka is the Northeast Ohio area-wide coordinating agency, and they are a region's municipal planning organization and have jurisdiction over the transportation planning of Medina, Cuyahoga, Lorraine, Lake, and Geauga counties. And I just wanted to take a moment to officially invite the Hinckley trustees, as well as the general public, to attend Nawaka's community engagement session regarding their climate action plan. This meeting will take place on Thursday, August 24th from 5.30 to 7 o'clock p.m. in the Westfield Room at Akron University's Medina campus, located at 6300 Technology Lane, Medina, Ohio, 44325. The purpose of this meeting is to gather feedback from the public about climate concerns and remedies. Nawaka's climate action plan was initially slated to be finalized in June of this year. But due to much pushback from citizens groups fearful of the impact of governmental restriction and overreach, that deadline was postponed and these engagement sessions were scheduled as an attempt to quell some of the blowback. Last year, a greenhouse gas inventory was funded by the nonprofit Cleveland Foundation and Gunn Foundation. That study, which was conducted by a United Nations affiliate known as ICLE, the International Council of Local Environmental Initiatives, indicated that Northeast Ohio's greatest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions were number one, our homes, and in a tie for number two, were our gas burning engines and agriculture. Nowaka's stated goal is to achieve a greenhouse gas reduction of 63.3% by the year 2030 and to reach net zero, and that means zero pollution, by the year 2050. It is pretty simple to imagine what this will mean for Hinckley Township and Medina County as a whole. Considering the mileage the average Medina County resident drives for work, travel, and leisure, while factoring in how much of our local economy centers around large trucks and equipment, a reduction of 63.3% of emissions will essentially be an economic death sentence for us. What will Hinkley property be worth if we can't effectively plow snow from driveways and roads, mow and landscape lawns, and farm our fields? Electric equivalents to large gas engines, especially diesels, do not exist even if the manufacturers could keep up with demand. Also worth mentioning is what these reductions will mean for households. The Biden administration, who Nawaka mirrors in strategy, has openly discussed bans on natural gas stoves, furnaces, and hot water tanks, and has proposed a ban on the manufacturing of home generators. Even with the promise to outlaw home air conditioning and dishwashers, the additional strain on the electric grid due to mandated electrical appliances and vehicles will be the final nail in our coffin. No matter which side of the climate debate people fall on, it is important for everyone to understand that this well-funded, federally mandated, urban-centric organization is, is proposing so they can voice their concerns in person where they cannot be ignored. In the meantime, I encourage everyone to research the changes Nowaka has in store for all of Northeast Ohio residents by researching their library of documents and plans at eneo2050.com. Uh, for anyone that cannot make the Medina meeting, there will be four separate meetings on different dates in all of the other four counties prior to our meeting. And that schedule can be found at nowaka.org under the calendar tab. And again, just to reiterate, our meeting will take place on Thursday, August 24th from 5.30 to seven o'clock p.m. in the Westfield Room at Akron University's Medina campus, located at 6300 Technology Lane, Medina, Ohio, 44325. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention, John. I will not be able to make that meeting, but I will go online and see if there's another one that I can attend. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? My name is Sherry Ham, and I live at 15728 Boston Road, Strongsville, Ohio. And um, according to our mayor, I'm one of the very few that are against this ramp because according to him, surrounding cities are all for it. Um, I know at one point 
North Ralston was not for it. And now I just got a message tonight reminding me that it was said, and just to bring it to your attention, that um, at the NOACA meeting, um, Royalton is for this and that they will build on Boston, which is gonna bring more air pollution, noise pollution, light pollution, all of it. Um, I know the mayor says a lot of things, our mayor, and I don't believe half of it, at least half of it. He claims that um, there won't be any commercialization when the ramp comes, there'll be no trucks allowed. Um, I don't know any ramps off of a highway where trucks are not allowed to come off. <laughs> he claims that the reason that the ramps wanna be built is for the traffic on Howe Road and 82. I've lived there for 24 years. There's no traffic at the end of Howe in Boston. Otherwise I would be one of the ones complaining about it. Um, they have an ulterior motive, which is to bring the semi-tractor trailers down Boston Road so they can get to Fultz Industrial and get them off of 82. So they're gonna make Boston another 82 if they get their way. Um, like I said, North Ralton was not for it at the beginning and somehow or another, their, commun their community development director talked about how it would be a great thing to have this. So I came here tonight to see if Hinkley was in support of this and like, Cindy said, if you realize all the ramifications of this going in for your quaint community here. So I actually had a conversation with Brunswick about mm -hmm. this and mirrored their resolution opposing okay. it. We did that months ago. Great. Um, we, we cited all of the things that you guys have brought up today, the mm -hmm. crime, the traffic, the, the pollution. Accidents. Um, Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. It would change the footprint here in Medina County and mm -hmm. Cuyahoga County was making a decision mm -hmm. not letting anyone in Medina County know. And so there was frustration with that on mm -hmm. our end. Um, we did pass that resolution and we did submit it to the appropriate parties. They all mm -hmm. have a copy of it. There's nothing further that Hinkley Township can do. Okay. As Trustee Swedek had mentioned earlier, this is definitely, a, you know, this is a state initiative. And so that's where where it lies right now. Right, I know, I, I know they've done 20 studies now so far with our taxpayers' money, mm -hmm. which is, I can't even, I don't even wanna think about the money that they've spent on this. And every one of them comes back the same answer. I don't know why they thought this one would be any different um, other than the company was in Strongsville, but they even came back and said, it's not going to help the traffic on 82 by opening a ramp. So I don't know why it keeps getting pushed. I don't know what would change NOACA or ODOT's mind on this study or why any of this is going on. But I just know that he keeps saying that everybody is for this except Brunswick. Everybody. I mean, you can listen to his, any of the speeches he makes. Well, this board has, oh. has opposed okay. it. Well, that's nice to know. And that's why I wanted to come here. That changed our mind. Good. I'm glad. I really, because we like a quiet area down here. That's, that's one of the things we cherish is what we what we have. Existed. Okay. All right. Well, I like I said, I don't have any documentation about what they're saying about Hinkley or anything, but just so you know, they don't act, they don't always tell the truth. So I urge you to talk to your state reps and you know, I asked them oh, yeah. you why they think it is a good thing for you. Oh, because, oh, they've already told that, well, at least the city of Strongsville, it's, it's, it's better for the majority than it is for the minority. And that's what they're, and it does, it's not in their, I mean, it's not in their backyard. I mean, it's a problem that should be solved in their backyard. I think even the Medina County commissioners have, have opposed us at some level. I mean, we've yeah. all been quite active. Yeah, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how it slipped through. It was, it, there was some shady dealings. I know that. But anyways. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Jerry. Let's call. All right. End All right. it. Don't, don't give them too much With time. nothing else for the good of the order, I will move to adjourn at 7.39 PM. Second. Seconded by Ashley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone.